All right, so this is going to be a little video to talk about how to use Excel for um, computing the binomial and the geometric distributions, right? So I've kind of got this pre-set up where I've got the number of trials labeled, the number of successes, or sorry, the probability of success over here at point two. Um, so we're going to compute the probability of you know, X number of successes in two different ways, using our formula and then using the Excel formula. And then we're gonna do the cumulative probabilities using our formula and using Excel's formula, All right? So what are possible values of X? That is the first question we need to kind of think about here. Well, X can go from zero all the way to 10, eight, nine, 10, right? You can have zero successes, you can have 10 successes or anywhere in between. So let's talk a little bit really quickly about this value n choose x that's at the beginning of our probability function. Um, if you want to compute just that probability in um, Excel, you use this function combin, combine. I'm not sure how to pronounce it out loud, but it is the combin function. And there's the number, well, that's our n, right? There's n of them. And we are choosing, number are chosen, zero of them. Right, so we've got 10, choose zero, right? And if we wanna do that, we can just drag that down and oh, wait, what is happening here, right? What is happening here is that when we drag these down, both the blue and the red come down, right? Um, our little values kind of get pulled down along with us, which we want to happen for red, right? We want to choose one here but we want this blue to stay up here. So the way to fix this for your for the Excel unfamiliar here is to put in dollar signs on B1, right? So now we've got B1 here. We actually probably should do it on this one to be more proper, right? So we've got B1 and it will stay the same. That's what those dollar signs tell Excel. And A7 doesn't have dollar signs and it's going to move down. Aha, much better. Now here, if I click in here and look at my formula, I can see that I am choosing N choose X, which is what we want to see. So what is our formula for the binomial? It is N choose X times the probability of success which we want, oops, um, we'll put our dollar signs in later, <laughs> which we need raised to the X times one minus our probability of success raised to the N minus X, right? That is the formula for the probability of X successes in n trials for the probability of success p, right? So here we do need to put dollar signs on our b2. The purple is good. The blue needs to change. We put it here. We need to put it on n, right? Because those are going to need to stay static. So probability of one success is about 10%. The probability of two successes is about 30%, and the probability of 10 successes is almost zero. Um, and we can double check and make sure, we wanna make sure that all of these add up to one, like we know they should, and they do add up to perfectly one. And then um, if we want to look at how to do this the Excel way, our function is binom.dis. Right, so binom.dis, the number s, right? so our number of successes, it's here. The number of trials, here. The probability of success, here. And cumulative is false. We are only looking for the probability of being equal to x, not x or fewer. All right, and we'll go in and put these guys here. Drag down, 
and you can see that these are exactly the same, right? Excel just has this function in here that does this for you, right? So if I wanna do cumulative probability the quote unquote manual way, I can actually just take the sum of X or fewer, right? That is how we define this cumulative probability. The probability of one or fewer successes is the probability of one and the plus the probability of two, right? If you wanted to do it a little bit quicker, this plus this plus this, right? You do have to do this a little bit manually, which kind of gets old. Maybe my both hands on the keyboard for that one, right? But um, that does give you this cumulative probability. Alternatively, you can use the built-in stuff, the binome distribution, right? So I'm actually going to go ahead and just, well, now that we've talked about that, let's take this guy because the only difference, oops, the only difference here is now that this is true, right? So we have our binome dist, and now this guy is true. I'm drawing it all the way down, and you can see this cumulative probability. As always, the when x equals n, the probability of x or fewer is one, right? If you have n trials, you are guaranteed to get n or less successes. That is 100% guaranteed to be the case, right? So hopefully that tracks. All right, so let's switch gears and talk about the geometric distribution now. So now for our geometric distribution, our only parameter is our probability of success P, right? So we are looking at the number of trials until a first success is observed, right? So X can be one, right? You can get it on the very first try. X can be two, you can get it on your second try. X can be three. X can actually be all the way out to infinity. So in theory, you could miss that free throw every single time and not make one until your thousandth shot, right? We can look at what those probabilities look like, but in theory, X can go all the way out to infinity, right? I don't know why this is hitting here. Oh. Whatever. So, what is the formula for calculating the probability that x equals one, right? Probability of x equals x, right? We have one minus p, which we have up here already. And we need to raise that to the x minus one. And then that all gets multiplied by p, right? One minus p raised to the x minus one times p. And that is our definition of the geometric probability, right? So here we've got 0.3, which makes sense. You have a 30% probability of success on the first try. But then you have a 14, 15% chance probability of being right on the third try, missing twice and then getting it right, right? So this can go out as far as you'd like it to go, but you can see that these values actually get real small. So it's possible that it takes you all the way to 52, but incredibly unlikely, right? So that's what you can see here. And as before, if you wanted to do, you know, your sums, talking about your cumulative values, you know, here plus here, or here, plus here, plus here. This one's never actually going to get all the way to one because you have to get out to infinity for that to happen, which oh, those are gonna be out of order, but that's okay, um, right? So now you can see the probability of X or fewer over here, right? So hopefully that helps you guys out working with these two distributions in Excel. I'm gonna go ahead and post this uh, spreadsheet along with the video in Blackboard. And let me know if you have any questions.